stating Allied defeat of Iraqi forces. He announced some of our troops could be coming home soon. After consulting with Secretary of Defense Cheney, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Powell, and our coalition partners, I am pleased to announce that at midnight tonight, Eastern Standard Time, exactly 100 hours since ground operations commenced and six weeks since the start of Operation Desert Storm, all United States and coalition forces will suspend offensive combat operations. The president laid down several conditions that Iraq would have to follow in order to make the suspension of operations an official ceasefire. All coalition POWs must be released immediately. Kuwaiti hostages must be freed as well. Iraq must abide by all UN resolutions. And Iraqi military leaders must meet within 48 hours with allied leaders. This war is now behind us. Ahead of us is the difficult task of securing a potentially historic peace. Tonight, though, let us be proud of what we have accomplished. Let us give thanks to those who risked their lives. Let us never forget those who gave their lives. May God bless our valiant military forces and their families, and let us all remember them in our prayers. Secretary of State James Baker will be sent to the Middle East next week to begin talks about finally bringing peace to the region. The president's speech brought cheers of support and tears of joy from a local group, the families whose loved ones are stationed in the Gulf. Families came together to watch the speech at Orange Ribbon Headquarters in Evendale. Eyewitness 12's Chris Yaw is there with them right now. Chris, they must be ecstatic. will soon be coming home. They watched with tense anxiety, trying to hold back their tears, crossing their fingers, arms, and legs, as President Bush spoke the words they couldn't wait to hear. For Bobby Johnson, whose 21-year-old son is in the Gulf, it's an answer to prayer. It's what I've been waiting and praying for. My baby's coming home. For Myra Cornett, it's good news for her and her children. What it really means, I finally thought, is I can quit telling my kids, Daddy will be home soon. I can tell them Daddy's coming home now. <laughs> that just means so much. On their third wedding anniversary, Linda Cheney had two reasons to celebrate. This is um, the best news that I could possibly have. Besides my husband walking in right now, this is it. This is it. I'm ecstatic. And after the hugging, the cheering, the crying, came the singing. Now, soon after the singing ended, uh, the hall totally emptied out. Everyone got together for an impromptu parade through Sharonville and Evendale. And in fact, Ellen Lambing just got off the phone with the Cincinnati Police Department. She says they're all set to go down for a midnight rally at Fountain Square. Yeah! They couldn't be happier, could they? You know, and then, there is no more deserving group than these women right here. Most of them will, and I suspect the family members over there. Good for them. Thank you very much, Chris. Young. Thanks, Chris. People in the United States aren't the only ones celebrating. A party is already underway in the Persian Gulf tonight. In Kuwait City, citizens have been taking to the streets to celebrate the liberation of their country. Many Kuwaitis have been in hiding since Iraq invaded their nation back in August. And today was the first time they were able to move freely around the capital. The city still bears the scars of battle, though. Its estimated cleanup will cost hundreds of billions of dollars. But tonight, Kuwaiti citizens say that's a small price to pay for their freedom. Well, what may have been the last great battle of Operation Desert Storm was won by U.S. forces earlier today. 
three U.S. armored divisions hammered what was left of Saddam Hussein's Republican Guard in an area west of the Iraqi city of Basra. The Allies destroyed more than 700 enemy tanks and thoroughly confused Iraqi soldiers. A senior military officer called it a mopping-up operation and says Iraq's elite Republican Guard never stood a chance against Allied forces. Iraqi soldiers realizing their battle was lost continue to surrender in record numbers today. In just four days, more than 50,000 Iraqis have surrendered to Allied forces. Many are near starvation and appear happy to have been captured. The Allies say the thousands of POWs are straining their resources but claim they are able to handle them. The man responsible for bringing our forces to the brink of victory says he's extremely pleased with the success of Operation Desert Storm. Today, General Norman Schwarzkopf held his first briefing since the ground assault began. He said the operation was so successful, his forces could have driven right into Baghdad if they'd wanted to. Schwarzkopf revealed how the Iraqis were fooled by elaborate hoaxes and surprised by secret movements of entire divisions. The Allied commander seemed delighted when asked about his assessment of Saddam Hussein. As far as Saddam Hussein being a great military strategist, he is neither a strategist nor is he schooled in the operational art, nor is he a tactician, nor is he a general, nor is he as a soldier. Other than that, he's a great military man. I want you to know that. <laughs> Shorskoff went on to say one of his only regrets was that Americans had to lose their lives in order for the U.S. to win the war. Now, you can see all of the general's incredible briefing in its entirety tonight right here on Channel 12. It will be broadcast immediately following Nightline tonight. The United States is wasting no time in helping the Kuwaiti government return to power. The State Department says the U.S. Embassy in Kuwait may reopen as early as tomorrow. The new U.S. Ambassador and his staff are on their way to Kuwait City tonight. Their goal will be to provide support and advice to the Kuwaitis as they take back control of their country. Still to come on Eyewitness 12 News, a break in a 24-year-old murder mystery that puts police back in the hunt. Also, it looks like we're headed for some pretty warm weather once again. Tim's forecast is coming up in just a couple of minutes. And Senator John Glenn is cleared in the Keating 5 scandal. We'll tell you what happened to the other four when we come back. Prescription drugs help millions of people lead healthier, happier lives. But before you take prescription medication, have it filled at SuperX. Only SuperX has the new RX Watch system to screen your prescriptions for potential drug interactions, drug allergies, and for how your prescription might interact with your pre-identified health conditions. Plus, SuperX RX Watch has a 24-hour 800 number for emergencies. RX Watch. It's another reason to trust SuperX. Ask your pharmacist for details. Good morning, Cincinnati. We're the station to turn to first for news, weather, and traffic. Watch Good Morning, Cincinnati, a solid hour of local news, weekday mornings at 6, only on Channel 12. A current affair has the Jim Morrison story the new movie won't tell. Three of his ex-lovers reveal what the king of sex, drugs, and rock and roll was really like. Jim Morrison, behind closed doors. Tomorrow night at 7 on Channel 12. Now, for a limited time, your tri-state quality Ford dealer is offering the lowest rates ever on 1991 Ford Escorts, Rangers, and Festivas. It's not 12%, it's not 9%, it's not even 6%. Right now, you can get 3.9% financing for 48 months. That's 3.9 financing on all new Escorts, Rangers, and Festivas. But this is a limited time offer, and it's only for the tri-state area. Get 3.9% financing for 48 months now at your tri-state quality Ford dealer. Ohio Senator John Glenn and three other senators are in the clear tonight. The Senate Ethics Committee is no longer investigating their alleged involvement in the so-called Keating Five Savings and Loan cover-up. The committee had been investigating the actions of five senators linked to former Cincinnati financier Charles Keating. Keating, who owned the failed Lincoln Savings and Loan, gave millions of dollars in campaign contributions to the senators. The committee also cleared Arizona Senators D Dennis DeConcini and John McCain, as well as Senator Donald Regal of Michigan. The committee did not find enough evidence to continue the investigation into California. He, they did, rather. That, that was a mistake. The committee did find enough evidence to continue the investigation into California Senator Alan Cranston's involvement with Keating. 
The New York City Board of Education has reached a dramatic decision tonight. After months of debate, the nation's largest school system has voted to give out condoms to school children. The contraceptives will only be given out when the kids request them, but their parents' permission will not be required. School board members say this one-of-a-kind program is necessary to fight the AIDS epidemic now going on in New York City. A settlement in the 1989 Exxon Valdez oil spill could be just days away now. An agreement has been reached that would reportedly call for Exxon to pay $1.2 million in damages to Alaska and the U.S. government. More than 11 million gallons of crude oil spilled into Alaska's Prince William Sound when the Valdez ran aground. The money will be used to restore natural resources to the area. A final settlement could now be signed within a month. Speaking of, that's devastating. See those pictures every time we look at it, isn't it? To, yeah, to imagine that that with, can happen. With the good news out of the Gulf today, I think everybody's forgotten about the oil spill in the Persian yeah. Gulf and also the, the wells that keep that burning, burning out of control yeah. and keep throwing pollution into the air. And that's certainly something that's going to have to be taken sure. care of. Sure. And you've got to wonder what's left of Kuwait at this exactly. point. Exactly. And I read a thing that said that the, that could actually change the temperature of the earth in that particular region. It, you know, there has been an interest. Uh, it, in the past, um, there was a volcano way back in history, which threw up enough volcanic ash. Mm -hmm. And in one year, there it was called the year with no summer, uh, where it basically kept a lot of the sunshine out. And there was a year with no summer uh, all over the United States and all over much of the northern hemisphere. I don't think, from what I've read, that the oil wells can throw enough pollution into the sky to yeah. do that. But we're going to have to wait and see. Certainly some terrible ecological effects from uh, the Gulf War. Let's head outside. On a lighter note, it's off to Northgate Mall, and it's off for another visit with the Hawkman. Steve Hawkins of Q102 mm -hmm. is still up there, and he'll be up there till Sunday. He's living in a box. Doesn't look so good, and he smells even worse. If you'd like to donate some money, all you have to do is go out to Northgate Mall. There's Sebastian there with him. Uh, send up a couple of bucks to the Hawkman. It's all for a good cause. Easter Seals, he'll be up there till Sunday, and that's when the uh, telethon is. Hosts this year, I believe, Rob Braun and Mary Krutko. Take a look at the numbers, everybody. Here they are, 24 for the low, 37 for the high. Normals are 26 and 45, and our record's minus 4 and 70 degrees. Right now, we've got 30. The relative humidity at 72%. Winds out of the southwest keeping us somewhat warm tonight. The barometer, 30.08, and the river level going down at 32.1. It's mild Pacific air headed our way from the southwest. It will start to arrive tomorrow, and I think we'll see 60s during the day on Friday. Unfortunately, on our heels, we've got this to contend with. It's a big low pressure system now affecting the state of California. A lot of rain over central California down into southern portions of the state. As a matter of fact, take a look at a few pictures from Los Angeles, California. You don't think it's a big deal? It's just rain, right? Well, Los Angeles, San Diego, they haven't seen rain in 30-some-odd days. Los Angeles picking up about two-thirds of an inch of uh, rain today. San Diego picking up better than a half inch. Take a look at the storm system, everybody. It's simply raging out of the uh, Pacific Ocean and headed into California, bringing them a lot of moisture. Eventually, this moisture will give us rainfall during the day on Friday, Saturday, and into the day on Sunday. Tomorrow, however, that warm air pushes into the tri-state under partly cloudy skies. will rise to about 50 degrees on Thursday. On Friday, it looks like a temperature better than 60 degrees, with 70s not far off. Doesn't look like they'll get here, but we could see mid-60s during the day on Saturday with the chance of showers and thunderstorms popping up. So for tonight, patchy clouds and flurries, the low temperature down to 27. For Thursday, partly cloudy, the high temperature to about 50 degrees. Thursday night, that's tomorrow night, not that cold, very mild, near 43. And here's your five-day outlook, everybody. On Friday, 61, with rain starting up. On Saturday, a chance of showers and thunderstorms near 66. Sunday, 50, the rain continues. And on Monday, 45 and partly cloudy. So the down and dirty for the next couple of days is it's going to warm up quite a bit, but we're going to see bunches of rain from that big Pacific storm system. Finally, Los Angeles and San Diego get a little bit of rainfall out there. It's been a drought oh, over yeah. Southern California. Just if only, terrible. If only we could send our rain over to California. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to all <laughs> head this way. Okay, thanks, Tim. Thank you for being so Pacific about it, too. We appreciate it <laughs> so much. Oh. It's awful, but it's free. And I think more importantly, <laughs> coming up here in a couple of minutes, yeah. we're going to take you not only to Oxford to see what the Redskins did today, mm -hmm. but also high school basketball tonight and the Reds down in Plant City. Back to Florida. Oh, it's a tour de force. A plethora of things yeah, originating from the sports department tonight, and you're welcome to join us in just a moment. A lot of stuff, too. Oh, buddy.
Hello, I'm Jeff Weiler, and how much do you like to save money? Believe me, you can right now at the Jeff Weiler Auto Center. We still have 60 new 1990s in stock, and they're at bargain prices. Chevrolet cars and trucks, Chryslers and Plymouths, if you're looking for a domestic. Mazdas, Mitsubishis, Geos, if you're looking for an import. And we have 16 1990 conversion vans. All are priced below cost, and all are at one location. The Jeff Weiler Auto Center, Route 32. 1990s are cheaper than they've ever been in the country. Don't adjust the color on your TV. These are Florida oranges, and this is as orange as they get. Now, while some people look for oranges that are very, very orange, Florida oranges are sometimes a little yellow, even a little green. But inside, Florida oranges are rich, ripe, delicious. Outside, this is as orange as it gets. Inside, you can't get more orange. Get fresh Florida oranges at participating Super Value stores. Five pounds for $2.29. Toyota dealers are doing it! Toyota's hot, 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 Holding their hottest sales event ever! Toyota's hot, 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 With savings on Camry, the most trouble-free compact three years running! Toyota's hot, 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 Talking option savings, factory incentives, and easy financing on the best-selling Toyota of all, Camry! Toyota's hot, 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 Toyota, more for your money, it's hot, hot, hot! Today's weather is brought to you by Gold Star Chili. Check out our 89 cent conies every day. Right now, you can get cheese conies for a low 89 cents at Gold Star Chili. Every day, no coupons needed. As many as you want. But come in now because this offer won't last forever. Conies for 89 cents. No strings attached. Gold Star Chili. I like it like that. As you just saw, the stock market soared more than 24 points today. In other business news, the Commerce Department reports the economic decline at the end of last year was the worst in eight years. The government says the gross national product declined dramatically in the last quarter of 1990. New York's Daily News may finally be forced to close next week. The Daily Tabloid has been crippled by a four-month-old strike, and tonight the publisher says if the nine striking unions fail to grant contract concessions by Monday, he'll decide whether to close the 71-year-old paper. I was just in New York uh, a little while ago and got to see some of the, the pickets out there, and the newsstands aren't even carrying it. It's a real ugly situation in New York. It's a shame to lose it, too, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, fun. it's a big paper. Sure it is. It's a shame what happened in Oxford tonight, too. Yeah, they didn't do so well, I did mean, they? This is, you know, this is like, this is very traumatic because the Miami could have had its own yeah. destiny in its own hands here, but it's over. I'm, the Miami's got no shot of finishing first in the MAC. For, the, for openers, Eastern beat Kent tonight. Wait a minute, it gets worse. The Skins got skunked tonight by Central. Come on, let's go up to Millet Hall and take a look at Matt Kramer nailing a three-pointer. He had 25 tonight. Miami down by 14 at the half, but they come rambling back. Kramer with a jumper. Miami with a one-point lead here. Now, five seconds to go. Darian McKinney misses the free shot, sinks the second one, ties the game at 72. We're in overtime. Where Scott was the hot shot for Miami. He had eight of their 13 overtime points. Miami by one, 15 seconds to go, but at the buzzer sean waters wins it central michigan the winner tonight in oxford the final central 86 miami 85 let's go to the college numbers now in the top 25 tonight number eight duke has beaten clemson number 18 lsu new problem tonight with florida number 20 seton hall a loser tonight to connecticut in the big east mississippi state tonight beats auburn down south out in Oklahoma tonight. Look at Sean Sutton, the son of a coach. Down to Johnny Pittman. Oh, my goodness. Oklahoma State in a rumble with Nebraska. Danny Knee used to be the boss at OU. Now coach Nebraska, but tonight Sutton too much. Inside of Byron Houston. Sutton Sr. 
and Jr. bring knee to his knees tonight. The final, Oklahoma State 80 and Nebraska 69. Now, one of these days, it's going to be all over for Paul Fry. He's the elder basketball coach, and he's retiring when the season is over. But tonight, Hans Fry lives for another day. Elder has beaten Taft. Let's check out Elder's big gun, Bobby Westerkamp. Watch him get the pass, nail the fadeaway jumper. Westerkamp can work inside, too. Watch him on the drive for two of his 18 as Elder moves on. And Taft goes home. Elder, the 67-49 winner tonight. Let's go to the big numbers. Besides that, at the Shoemaker Center tonight, Aiken, Rob, that's where you went to school. I keep seeing the commercial. They keep talking about it. Aiken beats Milford tonight, moves on to the Division I playoffs. In Division II at Anderson tonight, by a bucket. Turpin over Forest Park, and Roger Bacon over Goshen, 77-54 the final. Kentucky boys now. Let's take a look at the 33rd district. Connor was all over Walton Verona tonight. In the 34th district, holy crossover Dixie Heights. In the 35th district, Newport was the winner. 36th district tonight, Brossard over Silver Grove. In the girls' playoff action tonight, Connor tonight over Walton Verona. Dixie Heights has beaten Holy Cross. In the 35th district girls, Newport was a five-point winner tonight. And Brossard by five over Silver Grove. Hey, I got a boo to lay on you tonight. You know when you're in the big time, you got to finish everything. When you got the highway open for a dunk, you got a dunk. Let's go to Philly, where tonight against the 76ers, Atlantis, Kevin Wilson absolutely blows it. Watch this. Oh, that's awful. He gets set up like a good buddy who needs a blind date, and Kevin Willis blows it. Boo to the Atlanta Hawks, Kevin Willis tonight. And worse, Dallas beats his team 108 to 104. All right, our latest LaRosa's Athlete of the Week. Tonight, the kid who's got all of Northern Kentucky talking, and the best part about him, he's just a pup. At six feet one and 150 pounds, St. Henry's Robbie Padgett doesn't look like much of a player, but when you look at the scorebook, well, you better have the oxygen close by. He's not going to scare anybody to death by appearance. You know, it's, it's like I like to say, whenever you look uh, in the scorebook and see what he did, then, then you, you really realize what a force he is out there. He is a force out there. Check the numbers. 26 and a half points per game, tops in the region. 78% from the line. 54% from two-point range and 49% from three. But this kid is modest about it. We're averaging 90, 92 points a game, and I average 26 of them without the other people in the locker room and on, out there on the floor. We're, we're nothing. Other people may be out there, but Rob is the man. The coach says so, and even Rob agrees, though it took a while. I had trouble at first, but then I realized what I had, had to do and uh, help our team to do a job that we've been doing this year. And he'll be doing that job for a long time because Rob is only a sophomore. He's got two years to play. It'll be longer than that, though, before we see another La Rosa Athlete of the Week like Robbie Padgett. Every once in a while, you'll run into one who you know is just meant to play basketball. And when I see Robbie Padgett playing basketball, I see, I see smoothness out there. I see a, a person who looks like he was, he was meant to, to be on a basketball floor. And he was. 26 and a half Shoot. points per game is what he's averaging. No major news today from Plant City. The Reds have the full squad in practice, and they'll continue that through next Friday, which is when the first exhibition game is. Yeah. All right, Ken. Fast. Thanks. Please. Just ahead tonight, a chilling story to report in our Cincinnati mystery. We'll explain why police are so worried about this convicted killer who will soon be getting out of jail. There are some things that go together doubly good. Mom and apple pie, stars and stripes, and the roses pizza. And we just keep topping ourselves. Try the delicious meat topper pizza, the meatiest pizza in town. Only $9.99. Get a second one for $4 more. And here's another La Rosa's double deal. Buy any medium or large La Rosa's pizza and get a pair of hoagies for only $4 more. La Rosa's meat topper and double deal hoagie offer for a limited time only of the roses. We just keep topping ourselves. Now at Fairfield Buick, receive a $2,500 guaranteed trade on every 91 Skylark in stock, a 91 Century 12495, a 91 Regal 14495, only at Fairfield Buick. Once again, the big long distance phone companies are gearing up for another round of advertising. If you're convinced this has nothing to do with better long distance service, call Lytel. 
We'll provide your business with highly responsive local service on an all-digital network at competitive prices. However, we will provide the latest dirt on the competition. Lytel, taking care of business. Hey, it's a Thriftway day! It's a great day for big savings at Thriftway. Like a five-pound bag of staff sugar, now just 99 cents with coupon. And get your favorite 7-Up or RC product in the two-liter bottle for 69 cents. Right now is the time to come to Chevrolet Superstore. Glenway Chevy Geo. Visit our super showroom and get superstore savings. Glenway Chevy Geo. Your superstore. Superstore selection of Chevrolets and Geos. Glenway Chevy Geo. Superstore. It's today's best way, including the price. Glenway Chevy Geo. Your superstore. This Thursday at Lazarus, get an extra 30% off selected clearance. Look for the signs and hurry in for the best savings during Lazarus' 14-hour sale, Thursday only. Cincinnati wakes up with Good Morning America. Weekday mornings at 7 here on WKRC Channel 12. A convicted killer sits in his cell in Warren County at this hour, but he knows freedom is near. His name is Nolan Ray George, and he has 21 months to go before he's released. That scares some local police officers. They've been looking into George's past, and what they found frightens them. As Eyewitness 12's Deborah Dixon reports in this Cincinnati mystery, the police investigation goes back to the summer of 67. The summer of 67, Ode to Billy Joe was likely one tune on the jukebox at Lang's Restaurant in Covington. Menus, can I get you anything right away? August 5th was Della Mae Miller's second day on the job at Lang's. For the 24-year-old single mother, it was also her last. Well, it's 3.30. I'm going to be going home for the day. Okay. Good night. Have a good day. Okay. Got to go catch my bus. Bye. Squirrel hunters found Della May's body eight days later here at the dump in Ludlow, Kentucky. Her waitress uniform was pulled up around her waist, and Della May was strangled to death with her own nylons. I'm considering that Nolan Ray George, uh, I'm convinced that Nolan Ray George killed Della Miller in 1967. In 1967, Nolan Ray George was a petty crook who lived in Covington, just a few blocks from Lang's restaurant. He moved away shortly after Delamay's murder. When he left Covington, Kentucky, Nolan Ray George, and went to Pontiac, Michigan, three separate incidents, like and similar, where girls were found with nylons wrapped around their neck, and two of them died, and one of them lived to tell her story. Her story helped to get George two murder convictions in Michigan, and a 40 to 60 year prison sentence. But a legal technicality helped to get him out early. Then he moved to Hamilton, Ohio. Nolan Ray George was paroled in December of 1981. And Sandy Garland Rose here in Butler County was found in October of 82, only nine months after his release. Just like Della May's body, squirrel hunters found the body of Cindy Garland Rose in a wooded area of Butler County. She was face down, nude and beaten. Two and a half weeks later, 22-year-old Tammy King was found in a Butler County woods, face down, partially nude, beaten, and strangled. A tip to police led to the arrest of Nolan Ray George. He was convicted of killing Cindy Rose, but because she died from exposure and not from the beating, he only got three to ten years. The Tammy King killing is still unsolved. Nolan Ray George refused to give me an interview, but he did talk with the detectives a couple of weeks ago. He said he did not kill Tammy King or Della Mae Miller, but he also told them he was looking forward to getting out of prison in December of 1992. I have great concern that come 92, if he is freed, that this could possibly happen again. George is the prime suspect in the Tammy King murder, according to Butler County Detectives Rick Sizemore and Charlie Prophet. And they're working with Kentucky cops to find new information on the Della Mae murder 24 years ago. 
Enough information, they hope, to keep Nolan Ray George behind bars. Deborah Dixon, Eyewitness 12 News. And Eyewitness 12 News has learned that within the past couple of days, police got some information that Nolan Ray George may have known Della Mae Miller back in 1967. If you have information that could help solve this murder mystery, call Crime Stoppers at 352-3040. You can get a reward and you don't have to give your name. When we come back, a last look at the incredible turn of events in the Middle East. Come see what we're celebrating at the Olive Garden. There are costumes and masks, but it's not Halloween. There is a feast of special holiday dishes, but it's not Thanksgiving. There are wonderful treats, but it's not a birthday. It's Carnival of Venice, a bit of the best of every holiday. And it's going on now at the Olive Garden Italian restaurant, where all the best of Italy and Venice is yours. Recently, we compared the Toyota Corolla, the Nissan Sentra, the Honda Civic, and the Ford Escort to see which went farthest on a single tank of gas. Well, it wasn't the Toyota. And it wasn't the Honda. In fact, this year's winner wasn't built in Japan. And it wasn't the Ford Escort either. Introducing the all-new American-built Nissan Sentra. Great value, great mileage. Your nearest Nissan dealer is right on the money right now. There's a wonderful new breakfast food from Chiquita that has twice the vitamin C of an orange, as much fiber as a bowl of bran flakes, is very rich in potassium and other vitamins and minerals, and is very low in calories. Introducing the delicious Chiquita kiwi fruit. Of course, there are those of you who may say that Chiquita kiwi fruit is too ugly to eat at breakfast. But ask yourself, how good do you look at breakfast? Chiquita kiwi, quite possibly the world's perfect breakfast food. Save even more as the Hills 28 store going out of business sale enters its final weeks. Still millions of dollars of current Hills already discounted inventory in these 28 locations must be sold. Cashiers now deduct 50% off the lowest marked price, even on goods already marked down. You'll save 50% and more on every item in every department. Nothing held back. Everything must be sold to the bare walls. Quantities limited to stock on hand. Don't miss Hills 28 store going out of business sale. Shop these locations in your area. It's business as usual at all other Hills stores. If I buy an extended Safari XT from GMC Truck, can I take it to work every day? Definitely. What about my carpool? Absolutely. Can we take it on vacation? Of course. With all of our luggage? All of it. Will it tow our boat? Certainly. It's a big boat. Safari XT can tow up to 6,000 pounds. Wow. But can I afford one? Sure. Come in today and compare prices. CTL Kristen, George Walter, Fear or Baker GMC Truck. It truly has been an incredible turn of events in the last few days, especially the last few hours. Brave American men and women have accomplished an astonishing victory in the Middle East. While we know all the danger is not over, a peaceful solution does appear to be in sight. As we close tonight, a look at some of the events that transpired this evening, events that are shaping our world and our history. Good night.